Uh, <laughs> uh, next up is going to be a, a challenge. And as you know, there's lots of prizes and cool interactions to be done with the challenge. This is going to be the kickoff for healthy urban living in station areas from the uh, sponsored by the Utrecht Economic Board. I'm just going to check if people are ready. Not ready yet? We're just going to take uh, a couple of minutes to get set up. There's going to be slides. There's technology involved. I know, it's crazy. Yeah, no it's slides. crazy. But there's technology involved. This needs to get set up, and then uh, we'll be ready to go. Don't go yeah. anywhere. This is going to be the challenge kickoff yeah. from yeah. the uh, healthy yeah. urban yeah. living. If, hel if health and urban cities is your thing, yeah. please come on over. We are at the creativity stage, the creativity and social impact stage. It's always exciting how long this is going to take. We we have no idea. <laughs> it's uh, I'm not a religious person, but I'm tempted to say it's in God's hands right now. I have no idea what's going on. It's in the, the, the God of technology's hands right now. I must say this is the first time I'm presenting like barefoot. This has never happened before. There's stickery tape out here. Watch out for that. You might trip over it and fall flat on your face like I just did almost. Looks like you guys are scared. Yeah. Staying staying away, out of sight. You know, this is a really fun conference to get engaged. Like you can actually ask questions, learn things, win things, throw tomatoes if you brought your own. Yeah, this is him, yeah. And this is the presentation helemaal goed. <laughs> All right, I think we're ready. Okay. Next up is the challenge kickoff for healthy urban living in station areas brought to you by the Utrecht Economic Board. Please give a warm wel welcome to our next speaker. Thank, <laughs> thank you very much. So come a little bit to the front. I'm waiting for my mic, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Come a little bit to the front. Yeah, <laughs> it's nice and cozy, they say. Okay, yeah. So welcome, everybody. It's the start of Hacker City, and we are not starting it over here alone. At the same time, in Porto, Santander, Recife in Brazil, uh, they are starting Hacker City as well. It's the second year they are organizing it. Last year it was in Porto alone, but this year it's with four cities at the same time. 24 hours, a hacker city with smart city, urban questions uh, to, uh, to solve for you. And I will tell you something about that later on. But it's very exciting to have around the world in four cities the same hacker city at this moment. So hacker city is about in Utrecht at the campus party about two things. Uh, if you have read the things, and it's the most exciting uh, challenge during this campus party. And technology 
always have to wait. Yeah. Why are we organizing this? Um, is that you see there are a lot of things happening in cities. 70% of population will live in cities within 30, 40 years. So cities are the place to be and have the most important things to solve about energy, mobility, uh, waste, uh, all kinds of questions. And in Utrecht and Amersfoort, there are two areas uh, that will have a large development in the next 10 years. So, where is the receiver? Hmm? I'll just, I'll just use, use the space bar, uh, it works as well. This is Utrecht Central Station area. If you, who has walked around here, who has been outside the last few days? Oh, you have been outside, okay. We have a special guest because all the dots you see over here, all the markers you see over here, are projects in the Utrecht Station area in the next 10, 15 years to be developed. And we have Martin Mulder, project director of the Utrecht Station area, who will say something about the uh, development things in this station. So Martin, can you come up to the front? So we are quite interested because we see a lot of markers on the, on the, on the map. So there will be a lot of development and a lot of, a lot of things happening in the next okay. years. Uh, there will, uh, indeed, there will uh, happen a lot. Um, but I'm not going to tell something about each uh, project. I was asked to tell you something in common. <laughs> That's what I was asked for. So I like to do that. Uh, dear very young ladies and dear very smart young gentlemen, dear other people. I said dear very young and smart ladies, sorry, I, uh, <laughs> this word I missed. Uh, not so long ago, Utrecht had a railway station where according to its function, trains rolled in, travelers arrived and departed, carrying coats and bags while trains continue continue their iron way. Also not that long ago, Jaarbeurs, this expo hall, was the location where you went to admire the newest, fastest, most expensive car, including the attractive lady on the top of the bonnet. Those days are definitely past. Train passengers no longer look outside the window. They don't read books and they seldom converse with fellow passengers. They communicate with another digital world in their smartphones. Yarbrough's visitors no longer gaze, gaze starry-eyed at the shining new products, but they are working here, like you are. Real estate fairs no longer show their new roof, roof tiles or postal boxes. They are network events for everyone who has anything to do with the building process. The beer and the small deep fried meatballs with mustard, bitter baller and typical Dutch snack are more important than window frames and bricks. And have a look at how you yourselves operate here these days. We don't should read from a computer and not from this enormous worldwide event would be unthinkable even 10 years ago and now Amersfoort and Utrecht city would not know how to do it without you everyone observes global urbanization you said it the teeming interlinking urban chaos of workspace housing university, terraces, cinemas, hotel, buses, squares, trees, canals, underground, pipes, cables, children, parking lots, shops, pigeons, restaurants, parks, Wi-Fi connections, monuments, street musicians, and all these thousand elements which make a city. Luckily, in the cities of Amersfoort, people cycle a lot. 
Otherwise, we would have an enormous amount of polluting dust particles in the air here, like in Beijing. And car traffic would totally stagnate, like in Jakarta. However, Amersfoort and Utrecht do grow. And not only urban areas are growing, but also our ambitions. We want to enlarge our beautiful historic center. And I do ho really hope that you are not only sitting here inside in this building without windows. Do take ample time to visit the Utrecht city on the other side of the railway station, the terraces of the Oude Gracht, where you can enjoy the nice weather outside. And we, as I said, we are able to, to double, we aim to double our historic city center to this side of the railway station. We want densification, we want high rise, we also want green and urban growth in a sustainable, healthy way. We wa don't want buildings which will last on 50 years, but we want buildings for 200 years or thousands. And when there is not enough space for park, a park horizontally, we what would like to go vertical, see trees at the 20th floor. We don't want petrol cars, but electric cars, which you share, like the BMW i3. We want zero energy housing. And especially we would like people who work and live in a new city center to be healthy. We make a healthy urban boost here. We don't want to them to be smoke. We don't want them to drink too much. We don't want them to only buy and consume pizzas, Coca-Cola and French fries with mayonnaise in the station hall. We want them to meet each other and bunch under a tree. We would like them to buy sustainable clothes. We want them to be able to walk, run, swim, or cycle along green-blue corridors in a new city center. And we would like them to be happy. Happy? Yes, happy in this new city center. I wish I had a device, an electronic gate here in this area, like at the airport, through which people could pass at a voluntary basis and which did not measure whether you carry drugs or pocket knives or scary fluids, but which enables you to measure how you feel mentally and physically and how much exercise, healthy food and sustainable traffic the day will demand of you. Something like that. Um, or something entirely different, something a lot better something which is more digital and innovative. Because we are now still much building in old-fashioned bricks and mortar. 50 years ago, we have turned canals, grachten, into roads. And we are turning those roads now back into waterways, back to the future. That's wha what we are doing in the historic center. Perhaps very important for the old city, but we cannot longer work with ideas, ideas and plans from 2015 or 2010 and older still. Whereas we know that these will not be adequate to reach our goals to Amersfoort and Utrecht in 2030. Utrecht will have then 400,000 inhabitants by then. In 2030, the new cent city center will be finished and everyone should be healthy then and happy. So, please, plot, plot, device, plan, invent, come up with something smart, very digital, very innovative, and very 2030. I'm looking forward to the results. Good luck during the coming 24 hours. Thank you very much, Martin. So you see that he is explaining a lot about what's happening and not explaining every marker on the map. But if you see the city hall in the middle on the top, the white building, the central station, the over the things, it's almost doubled in size uh, now. Where we are, are right top, that's the Jaarbeurstrein.
the parking place you saw in front of the Yarbeurs will change. Within 15 years, there will be living 4,000 new inhabitants in that area. So it will change a lot within the next year. So a lot of tasks to make it green, to make it healthy, to make it livable, to make it sustainable in this area. It's the largest shopping area in the Netherlands. So how will shopping change in the next 10 years? And how will we uh, deal with that? So it's not only Utrecht, but it's also Amersfoort. This is the central state of this is station area of Amersfoort. You see same things. You see a bus station over there. It's a very interesting one because in a building over there, there's also the National Lung Fund uh, 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 Corporation. So they are working in an area with buses uh, beneath it with a lot of noise, a lot of pollution and things like that. So it's a very interesting question. So how can Amersfoort make that area more livable with all the buses, with the, the, the air pollution, the noise, things like that? You see the office buildings, and Amersfoort had a lot of office buildings with vacancies. So how can they make it more attractive for new kinds of work, new kinds of living over there? And at the top, it's not quite visible, but Amersfoort has a very historic inner city as well. How to connect the station area with the inner city in Amersfoort, for example. So the walkway to the inner city is not quite attractive. How can you make it more attractive? Because a lot of people visiting the station area are not visiting the inner city of Amersfoort while it's one of the most beautiful inner cities in the Netherlands, for example. So for Amersfoort, it's very important to make this area more healthy, more livable, more sustainable as well. Reduce vacancies, make the area more interesting to work, to live, and to less polluting and less noise, for example. So same questions in Utrecht and Amersfoort, a lot of developments and a lot of new questions uh, to be answered. So healthy urban living is a broad term and you can imagine there's a lot of things possible. It's about noise, it's about energy, it's about parking, it's about food, it's about biking. Uh, everything has to do with healthy urban living. So it's very broad for you to think about things while these areas are being developed. Every kind of solution is possible. How can we have people living longer in their homes? Uh, how can we ha um, make it easier for them to walk to facilities, to shops and things like that, instead of using cars? So all kinds of questions uh, related to urban development sustainable urban development are to be answered in these questions. So if you have ideas about a very specific solution, about biking, waste management, energy, for example, all kinds of solutions are welcome. So you don't have to have the grand idea to solve all problems in these areas. The cities are very much looking at solutions, even if it's a small solution solving something very important to them. So what we asked in Porto, Santander, Recife, and in Amersfoort, Utrecht, is that you use Firewear technology as well. If you are interested, you can come over to us, and Abigail is somewhere over here as well, in the back. Then you get an account for our Firewear Lab with uh, already uh, um, uh, generic enables installed, so you can have a quick start to use things like the Context Broker, WireCloud, things like that. They are pre-installed. So go to Abigail, she has the login details for you, so you get up and running very quickly to use Fiverr technology. Because Fiverr is important in all the cities who are participating in Hacker City. It's the open initiative in the European Union, Union to use standards, to have the open APIs, to use data, to create new solutions, and they make it repeatable, scalable to other cities. So the things you imagine for Amersfoort of Utrecht, that's one of the criteria for the judges as well. The solutions you think of for Amersfoort and Utrecht have to be used in Helsinki, Rome, Portugal, Spain, everywhere. So it's, you, you think of solutions for these station areas, but there are a lot of common or the same areas around Europe. You can have your solutions as well. So we will look at solutions that are 
scalable and reusable. Another important thing, and uh, later I will come back on that, we have a workshop about the Internet of Things using LoRa technology. Who has heard of LoRa? Everyone who went to the workshop last night? Okay, everyone, okay, or at least you. So we have a workshop at um, 9 o'clock, uh, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock, where we will show you with real-time sensors, you can use the sensors yourself. They, we will connect them to the LoRa gateway and we will connect them to Fiveware. We have developed a new generic enabler, it's called Concava, Convert, Calibrate, Validate, where you can convert the data from your LoRa devices so it is usable to the NDSI API from Fiveware, for example. So we will show that. Jan Willem Smink will be here at 9 o'clock and he will demonstrate to you how you can use those devices, LoRa devices, to make them available. Because that's a very important thing we see in the cities, is that there are a lot of LoRa devices being installed at this moment. If it's in waste bins, for example, or in bicycle uh, uh, stations, or parking places, or air pollution, or noise things, a lot of LoRa-enabled devices are used to get real-time data for uh, information uh, about city uh, problems. So you see an example over here. All the things we developed are developed together with the Things Network. The Things Network is a community-driven initiative started in Amsterdam half a year ago, and uh, it spread over the world within no time. So it's very interesting to use the LoRa technology in combination with the Fiverr technology, and at 9 o'clock we will show you how you can do that. And perhaps you have already looked at things, and what I mentioned is that you don't have to have the big idea, but you know about smart lighting, for example. You see lampposts using LoRa technology to report that they are broken or that the lamp has to be replaced, for example. We have solutions in the Netherlands where we use sensors to measure groundwater levels, for example, in dikes, so we know if there are problems with dikes, for example. It won't be necessary in the station areas, for example, but groundwater is a big problem in the Netherlands. We have information about uh, bicycle uh, uh, parking places. You know if there's place for your bicycle to um, uh, put them over there. Is there someone on a bicycle and went on a bicycle to the Netherlands? You are Dutch or not? Yeah, yeah. If you in, live in the Netherlands, you know that it's a big problem, bicycles around station areas, uh, so solutions for that. It would be very interesting. And other things about noise pollution, uh, you have a lot of bars and restaurants who have noise, and you can use noise measurement to show how high levels are, and that's a way for participation between inhabitants of a city, the people who own the restaurants, and government to show more directly what's happening. So these kind of solutions we are looking for, use sensor technology, use data, and create new solutions to make these areas more livable. So if we have it more concrete about what we are asking for, about is it about smart city or is it about smart citizen, it's not only technology driven, but it's also how do you um, involve citizens in your solutions as well. So you, the, the things we are asking for is how can you promote more sustainable mobility not only the cars, if you know that there will be 4,000 new inhabitants in this area alone, you can imagine that has consequences for mobility. How can we stimulate them to use bikes, to walk, or to do other things? So if you have solutions that you have incentives for them to not take their car, but to use a bicycle or to walk, that's great. How can you create a more active or stimulate a more active life? Do you have gaming things or things like that for people uh, to walk instead of taking their car or people living longer at their homes, making it interesting for them not to stay in their homes but to go outside, walk, things like that. How can you encourage community building in your neighborhood, uh, involvement, participation, so more the social things are quite interesting. Uh, the plans in Utrecht and Amersfoort is to have a 100% sustainable energy supply. So how can you do it? Solar energy, wind energy is quite interesting in a more urban area. 
And it's also an interesting thing, if you have a green area, is there still room for solar energy, for example, because it consumes a lot of space. So ideas about that, think about it. We are quite interested in ideas like that. Um, there will be a diverse population, young, old, all kinds of ethnic uh, uh, people living over here. So how can you create an environment that's interesting for not only the Dutch people, but also all the new people living over here, young, old, and things like that. So think about that. Uh, we talked about the vacancies in office buildings. So we see new concepts about work, leisure, living. Uh, think about that as well. Uh, local food production, interesting thing. Can you have more local food production in this area? And what does it mean? So and much, much more things about small things, large things where you can think about biking, air quality, parking solutions, vacancies, shopping. So as, as I mentioned, this area is the large, largest shopping area in the Netherlands. So with internet shopping growing, what does that mean for shopping areas like this? So to help you, we provide you with a lot of data. Uh, a lot of data about sensors. We have air quality sensors in Amersfoort, Utrecht, and we will tell you something more about that. We have a data platform you can use. So if you go to hackercity.nl, there's a login uh, a possibility, then you can create an account, and with that account, you have access to all the information we have. So there's a long list about archaeological information, about sensor data, about air quality, about Chamber of Commerce information, so a huge amount of information you can use for your ideas and for your solutions. And I will show a little, a, a few examples of that. So one of the APIs we will provide is, uh, does someone know Open311? No? Open311 is an open API for making requests about issues in public space potholes, broken street lights, uh, things, uh, garbage on the street and things like that. We provide you with a full API you can use for making requests and getting status information about those requests. So if you want to create solutions about f for people reporting issues or knowing which issues are already reported in this area about the quality in their neighborhood, you can use this API it's fully uh, uh, available with Swagger documentation. You can try it, so uh, uh, make use of it. Another interesting part, and I want to have Jeroen Maas uh, uh, over here to explain a little bit about that, and he has some examples as well. What you see over here is the station area of uh, Amersfoort, and Jeroen uh, provided us with uh, sensors over there for uh, registering noise and uh, the uh, climate in buildings. Uh, so can you show something about what you did over there? And you have access, if you have, are registered, you have access to this information and this API, and you can download it as well. So you have historic information about all things over there. So, show us. Yes. So. Hello everyone, uh, I'm from uh, Munisense. Munisense is a company which uh, has all kinds of sensors throughout the Netherlands and also in Europe and outside of that. And uh, we are, have provided for you, for the Hacker City, uh, a, a couple of sensors in Amersfoort and Utrecht. So here uh, you can actually uh, see our open data platform which uh, contains all of uh, the open data that Munisense provides. So in this map, you can see for uh, Amersfoort, we got uh, five indoor climate sensors, which are the red ones, uh, which are, has is this little uh, sensor, which measures CO2, temperature, and humidity. And they're placed in a ho hotel and in uh, uh, and the Huis voor de Gezondheid. And they're basically uh, all of the, the data you can use to make new kinds of applications. So we live in a new time for it where uh, uh, the applications, the technology, it's all moving on at a rapid uh, pace. So 
what used to be a really big and really uh, power consuming can now be made smaller and smaller and actually uh, run on batteries and just be taken out everywhere, made wireless. Uh, things are going really fast. And uh, for example, we also got a sound measurement point, which is kind of hidden, but it's the purple one in the in the corner there, and that measures the uh, the sound of the bus of uh, the buses uh, of Amersfoort, which you can find um, very interesting data of, because that's. You can, what you don't expect, you, you hear a lot of buses and you hear a lot of noise that they produce. And you think, well, 80 decibels is the, the maximum amount that you should uh, endure for a day. And it's maybe really interesting to see the data and view how close the, the sound that we measured from the sensor is next to that 80 de de decibels. Yeah, you might find something interesting. And we have also got these sensors in Utrecht, and it's all of the data is, is available using uh, a REST API. All of the data is JSON. You can just, uh, you don't even need credentials to access the data. Y you don't need to have an API key. You can instantly get the data and go on in your application. It's a really low barrier to entry. You've got Swagger documentation as well, so you could just download that and create your own client and go on with that data. Uh, there uh, we also got sensors which are uh, running more than one and a half years in Utrecht. So you can find a lot of historic data in there and maybe trends in there. Um, we've got six sound sen uh, sensors which are installed right next to the station in Utrecht, which uh, are at the top of the Hoogkaterijn building, which is really interesting data to, to view in the, the new developments that are going on in Utrecht, which you just hear. There's a lot of building, there's a lot of noise that's also produ produced, and maybe uh, uh, you could find some interesting tidbits in there, and maybe some interesting application which you can do with uh, building noise. So I, I hope you get something about, about this, and uh, figure something out which you can do with sensors. Uh, I've got a couple of these sensors with me, so if you are interested in using s data from these sensors, you just uh, come talk to me and I will explain you more. I will help you uh, around with the data platform. And you, you can also maybe use even these sensors that we got here for a live application in the city. Thank you, Jeroen. Yeah. It's interesting to know we work together with a lot of partners. So uh, Jeroen is from Munisense. That's the partner who provides us with all the data about the things you see over here. This is just a screenshot of Amersfoort. But as Jeroen said, same information available for Utrecht. So this is just two examples uh, of data available. We have a complete open source CCAN data repository with over 500 data sets with historic information as well. This is just an example of all measurement, uh, uh, all points measured with air quality in Utrecht itself. So uh, have a look at it. Uh, if you are registered, you can see over 500 of these data sets as well not only air quality, but also where are the uh, monuments in the, in the city, and uh, uh, you name it, and it is available. So that is about what Hacker City is, and there are some things I just have to say, because you have to know if you are participating, how the program works. So I will tell you something about uh, how the day starts at 7 o'clock, what you can expect and what we expect from you. Okay, at 7 o'clock till 8 o'clock, we expect over there in the fireware uh, uh, stand, the, uh, if you participate and you are alone, for example, you're looking for a team, you want to um, uh, join, come over there to the uh, fireware stand between 7 and 8, uh, uh, tell your idea, and we help you to find a team you can work with together uh, and uh, uh, work on your idea. So it's in the Fiverr EU U lounge, present your ideas, and Abigail will help you over there. So that's the first step. If you want to participate, come over there, create your team. If you already have a team, fine, just start, then uh, register yourself, and you have access. And so only if you think it's necessary. The next step, if you will want to participate, is create an account on hackercity.nl. There's a login button. You can create your account, then you get a key with give, which gives you access to all uh, data provided. There's also a briefing, 
with a description about Utrecht Amersfoort station area, what is going to happen over here, so you have a little bit more background on the things working over here. So that's for you. I said nine o'clock, but it is, it is eight o'clock, the workshop. If you want to know more about LoRa and uh, Concava and Fireware things, come over to the workshop. It's in the workshop area, I think somewhere over here. Next one over there, okay? Then we will show you, and Jan Willem Smink will give that workshop. He has sensors with him, and he will show you how to connect the whole chain from sensor to fiveware. So uh, that's from eight o'clock till nine o'clock. Tomorrow morning, uh, if you are still awake and survived the night and worked on your ID and want something different, we have a, a guided Segway tour through Utrecht's uh, shopping area and Utrecht station area. So um, uh, gather at the five air stand uh, at quarter to 10, and then you can join uh, the Segway tour, and it's a fun way to do something else for uh, a few hours and learn more about the station area in Utrecht. So at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, a guided tour on a Segway. Nine, seven o'clock tomorrow evening, you have to hand in your proposals. Um, at the podium, but Abigail, I don't know where the podium exactly is. Over here? Yeah, somewhere over here. You have to hand in your proposals. I will tell something about criteria later on, but you hand in um, uh, uh, your proposals. Why? Because at seven o'clock tomorrow evening, it's over. You have to stop working on your proposals, and then we receive your ideas. Till from se uh, seven till eight, you have uh, a three minute pitch where you can pitch your idea to the judges. Uh, and it's over here as well. So you have to prepare a three minute pitch as well to present what you have uh, thought of. Criteria which where the judges will look at is if it's a scalable solution, if you develop something that's so specific for Utrecht or so specific for Amersfoort, well, then uh, it can be interesting, but we are looking at solutions that can be reusable and scalable to other cities as well. You have to think about a business case. So if you have a grand plan or a big idea that's not quite realistic or not, we cannot use it, so you have to think about your business plan if you have an idea how this idea can become reality. So think about your business plan and say something about it in your three-minute pitch. It has to solve the specific challenges we mentioned in the Utrecht and Amersfoort area. So you have to look at mobility, you have to look at parking, or you have to find some kind of solution for one of these challenges Amersfoort Utrecht mentioned. It has to be realistic. Uh, sometimes it's quite interesting to dream, but we are looking for realistic ideas that can be implemented for real. You have to think about fiber technology. Um, we also know it's only 24 hours, that it's difficult to get known every detail of fiveware. So if you have a great concept, great idea, and mention the way you want to use fiveware, that's great. And if you have time to experiment with fiveware, that's great. But you have to say something about the way you want to use fiveware in your solution. It can be, this, it can be a concept, it can be an idea. And if you have tried it yourself, you get extra points, for example, but think about the way you want to use fiber. Um, you have to think about the way it's used by end users. So uh, think about your user interface, user interaction, and who the solution is for. And practice your three-minute pitch. So uh, uh, the, ju the judges will look at that as well. So uh, uh, prepare yourself for a good three-minute pitch where you answer the different questions, how it is scalable, how it is reusable, how realistic it is, why it's a good business plan, how you can use uh, uh, and implement your idea. And if you have done all that, the judges will look at the ideas, and I think that's the main thing why you should participate in this challenge, because what we think about this challenge, it's not about giving you 2,000 euros for your idea. We have thought about it with Utrecht and Amersfoort, what would be interesting for people participating is that their idea gets realized, that you get access to the network and to the municipalities of Utrecht and Amersfoort, 
So what we provide to the winners is several things. First of all, you get support, business support, you get technical, technological support, and you get marketing support from the, our partners. So Deloitte will give the winners six days of support to make a better business plan, to have uh, things about how you can um, make your, your, your pricing of your solution, things like that. So the business side of your solution. Atos will help you with all the technical issues if you want to use spyware, for example, and the more hard technical stuff and sensor things like that. You, the winner gets six days, number two gets three days, and the number three can, gets one day. So you get technological support, and Elba RAC, the partner, helps you with marketing things. You get articles uh, written, you get online uh, exposure, so your idea gets a big audience as well. That's not all. You also get some money that's, uh, uh, as a reward, but most important, the winner gets a chance to get its idea realized in Utrecht and Amersfoort because we have a grant of 25,000 euros for the winner to make their idea in a proof of concept in Utrecht of Amersfoort. So if you have a great idea, and the judges think it's a great idea, there's someone of Utrecht and Amersfoort as well, you have a chance to get 25,000 euros to make your solution real in Amersfoort or Utrecht. So we help you in the next six months, the winners, to get your idea with a good business plan, with a good marketing plan and technological support and the proof of concept in one of those two cities, if you have a great idea. So, if you need any support, there will be several people around for fiveware support, for data support, for things like that. There is in the briefing, if you have access to uh, all the uh, uh, information and data, there's information how you get the support. So if you have any questions, just ask. We are walking around in the fiveware stand to ask your questions. Come over, just ask, and we are there to help you. What you need now is if you want access to Fiverr as well, we have made already accounts for you, so come over in the next few hours and then you get an envelope with all the credentials and information to get access to our Fiverr lab environment as well. So come over and just don't hesitate to ask any question you want. So, we are looking forward to great solutions in any way and anything you want to realize and we hope to see you next day tomorrow at seven o'clock with some great proposals. Any questions for now? At seven o'clock at the fiveware you stand, so if you walk outside in the uh, large area, there's a stand with fiveware on it. So it's, I think it's the, the second, somewhere in the middle. It's great fiveware on top of it, yeah? Okay, and if you don't know where it is, I will stay here. So if people want to join, to go over there, we walk over there, yeah? Over there is Jan Willem Smeng. He will give the workshop on LoRa, Fiverr, and Concava. So if you have questions about that, I see a big box beside him. You have sensors as well, I think. Yeah, he has some sensors as well, so you can work with that as well. Any other question? Who, who already has a great idea? Okay. Looking forward to it. And see you in the lounge. If you want to go to the lounge now, follow me. And Abigail is over there on the table with all the information as well. So we will wait over there and then we go to the lounge. And if you want to follow, follow us. And we hope to see you tomorrow evening with great ideas or the next 24 hours if you have any questions. Good luck.